So this is the Ultimate Garden Room Series and we're getting the screed in. We've got Southern Screed, they're just about to arrive. They're gonna bring the lorry over and we're gonna get it all prepared. I'm gonna give them a, a set level, it's 50 mil thick and they'll set it all out and then the lorry will arrive. It will pull up on my driveway. It's about 80 meters from the drive, front of the drive where the lorry is, all the way to the back corner of the build over there. That's the beauty of this lorry, it mixes. It pumps and the amount of labour needed is much, much reduced. Imagine if I was doing this in sand and cement. First of all, it's thicker. Second of all, you've either got to get an or a screed lorry in with and a separate pump to actually pump it. You've got to get a guy to actually literally put it all into set datums, roll it all off. With an anhydrite screed, which is what this is, it is poured, it's dappled and paddled dead level and then that's that's all you need to do, it's done. The only important thing about that is, because it's a liquid screed, all the way around the edge, you've got to make sure you're properly tanked so your slip membrane comes up and it's taped and all the corners are nice and sealed. Anyway, the guys are going to get in here now, start levelling up and setting out for me. So this is the point where I've literally handed over to James. James is a perfectionist like me, there he is, and he's basically going to start setting out. He's got his tripods, otherwise known as spiders, and he's gonna bring them in to set everything out. So James will level everything up. He's got his laser level over there and get it all ready. So how's, how's it going, James? It's going well. Yeah, levels are good. Um, are we've taken 50 mil across the edge there and just leveled that across the whole floor. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, all good. Show me how they Tripods, work. Tripods, we call them. Yeah, so all we do is we, we set this basically as our datum. We'll come into a job, the customer will have a datum on the wall or a level they want to work to in terms of their door. Um, we'll set this top of this disc to that level um, and then simply with the laser and the staff, we, we level every disc yeah. over the whole um, group of tripods and then that's what we fill up to essentially. So, How thin and how thick can this liquid screed be? Um, you want really sort of 35 mil as a minimum. Um, you want to be in and around sort of that 50 mil mark. You don't want to go much thicker because obviously you're paying for more material. Um, and your drying times get a little bit longer on, um, on standard products. So um, yeah, 50 mil, 50 mil is generally what, what we'd recommend. And the product that I'm using here, tell us a little bit about the product. Um, so that's a Rapide product. So it's a Gypsil Rapide. Um, it's a, typically a faster drying screed. Um, it has an additive that goes into it, pre-blended into the binder. Um, that achieves slightly faster drying. So you're looking at 14 days um, maximum drying. And that's under ideal site conditions. Um, but yeah, it just helps speed everything up. So is that 14 point. days um, before floor covering? That's right, before a floor covering, yes. Is it? So, so um, in terms of curing, 24 hours, walk on it in 24 hours, work on it in, after 24 hours. Um, but before floor coverings can go down, generally it's 14 days. So we would always recommend that any flooring contractor, if you're doing the flooring yourself, um, that you do moisture test the screed itself to make sure that you're at a correct moisture level yeah. um, before putting you know, expensive tiles, for, down. Yeah. Um, what you don't want ultimately is any bond to fail because of because of the moisture content in the screed. So, and for um, some floor coverings, do you still have to sand off the later the later? Yes. Yeah. Not so much with the faster drying products. Um, there's less of a latent, but most flooring contractors will will still um, recommend giving it a key, giving it a sand, um, just to remove anything loose, any sort of film that you don't want to stick to essentially. So. 14 days is great because there's no way I'll be ready in 14 <laughs> days for flooring. That's it, yeah. um, but, and, and we'll put a dehumidifier in here. Sure. And we may even put 30 degrees through this under yeah, heating, which is yeah. a very low flow temperature of water. Yes, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, another, another benefit of the liquid screed um, is that you can force dry it, exactly that. Put some heat through underfloor heating um, after four or five days and you can essentially, yeah, force dry the screed um, whilst keeping a good airflow going through or dehumidifiers just to catch that moisture once it comes out, yeah. you can continue to heat it through. So. I've been monitoring the temperature and humidity of this building ever since we put the windows in. It's Definitely. a little device which is positioned above your head up there. On oh the, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and no. it's called a sensor push and it gives me the data. As I walk past the building, it sends me the data Clever. and it tells me everything I need to know. So Clever stuff. Especially eh? humidity. Yeah. Because yeah, um, it's it. super important. All right, mate, let's get your lorry going and let's get this yeah. show on the road. I'll give him a call. Thanks, Robin. So this is basically what it looks like once it's all set out. Um, all of the spiders have been levelled exactly to the top edge of the screen. Um, so the lorry's on its way. 
we'll go and get that backed into the drive, which is always a bit of a mission, and then they'll start pumping screed. Dad. We're actually raising the level of the vehicle on the suspension. That's a pretty impressive thing to do. I think this is the hardest thing about any job, isn't it? Maneuvering is actually the biggest hurdle. What a driver, eh? What a skillful man. I take my hat off to the HGV community in the UK because they just seriously are good at what they do. Look at that, that's so much skill. It's got the hang of it, hasn't he? <laughs> got a lot of skill. He has, yeah. With inches to spare, now he's gonna just watch his front wheel there. Look at that, absolutely amazing. I think we'll take that. Are you enough. happy with that? Yeah, that's good enough. So I, this I is, have done better, so. No, this is the same <laughs> lorry. Uh, same truck as we used three years ago, yeah. Yeah, same truck. It's been very busy since, but... Yeah, it still, uh, it looks, still looks pretty pristine, though, considering, you Yeah, know. Dan likes to keep it clean. Yeah, <laughs> we, we try and be clean a bit. It's, um, but yeah, it's been, as I say, it's been very busy since. A little birdie told me you've got actually another lorry. Yes, we do. So another truck, um, same setup, um, which we're just in the process of getting on the road. Um, that's going to supply a slightly different product, uh, cement-based flow screed. Um, which a lot of people are using at the moment as yeah. well. Yeah, why do um, they use that instead of an hydride? It, it also achieves faster drying, 14 day drying. Um, it's just um, more of a friendly product if you like. Every, everybody knows cement as opposed yeah. to an hydride. So, so um, this is for the people who will, take, who will tell me in the comments, oh, I don't like that stuff. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. there's a cement based one as well. So right. um, it acts, it's installed in exactly the same way. Yeah. Um, a comparable finish. Uh, you have to be a little bit more careful with expansion and things like that, so really? expansion through doorways. Okay. Um, but in terms of depth, in terms of performance, it's it's exactly the same, pretty much. So nice to see see the truck back on the drive. As Dan. All right, Dan. <laughs> How's it going, Robbie? I'm all right. How about you? Yeah, yeah, very well. Good. Nice Good. to see you. Yeah, and you. Let me get my nice, on. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You're like uh, the dream team. Wow. We are. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Since uh, the last video, we get a lot of. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of followers, a lot yeah, of your followers. Yeah. Oh, that's good though, isn't it? I mean, recognised quite a bit, and yeah, it's oh, a that's bit, good, isn't a it? A bit odd. People expect someone else then to turn up. Oh, didn't realise it was going to be you two, but that's amazing. <laughs> hey, that's amazing. That's really good. Yeah, oh well, let's. Uh, we've got another one to do now, so uh, yeah, away we go. Sweet. Tell me exactly what it all all does. Um, so basically, it's um, it's what they call a mobile battery plant. So you've got, um, if you look at the front of the truck there, you've got a bin for sand right. in the very front of the truck. Um, towards the back, you've got a bin for the binder. Um, along the sides, you have water tanks, and then that is all measured into this uh, mixing unit, which will mix it um, into blend it, and then that that then drops from here down into the pump unit, which pumps out through these pipes once attached okay. into the um, in situ. And you've got um, how many metres on there? Uh, we, at the moment, I think, I believe it's about 85, 90 metres on there. So. Oh, that'll get us all the way down there then. Because you've, so. you've actually <laughs> got up the drive further than I measured to. So um, he's done well. you've yeah, saved 10 well. metres of hose there. Um, but yeah, generally, we can get at most places with that hose um, on longer. We can add pipe should we need to, all right, to go okay. further yeah, as well. So is there a limit though to how high or how um, far? We've done... <sighs> We don't really want to test the limit. We've done 12 storeys um, height-wise, right. uh, double storeys, so wow. very high. Um, and the longest we've gone with this one, uh, probably 120, 130 metres, something like that. 130 so, metres, that's a good which distance. Is a, which is a long way, pumps perfectly along that sort Brilliant. of distance. Show me the computer, I love the tech. Yes, see, the whole truck is run from this, this screen that you see here, which right. we're, we're yet to turn on, but basically, um, pumping, mixed designs, um, how much water goes in, how much sand goes in. How much binder goes in is all done through this screen. Wow. Um, all controlled through there, as well as jet washers, lights, um, mixing units. It looks really, yeah, it so. looks amazingly simple considering what it does. I mean, they've, they've laid it out well, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Yeah, it's, it's a very clever bit of kit. Um, just makes our lives easier. Mm. You know, it's such a good, such a good system. Um, 
especially when you compare a liquid screed mm. to a traditional screed, it's mm. just it's so much easier. And how many cubic meters can you batch or make on this lorry? Um, on this truck, um, a maximum of 20 cubic meters. That's a, that, that's a lot of area. That relies on, um, on a delivery of sand, so a grab lorry will come in, top the sand up. Right. Um, and then we can get a maximum of 20 cube off there, um, which is, yeah, 400 square meters at 50 minutes. Is it? 400 square meters? That's yeah. a warehouse. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big size, yeah, big area. Yeah, we have done a few warehouses, so. So what's it doing at the moment? So at the moment, it's just automatically greased all of the, uh, the axles, the blades, it's got an auto lubing system on Is it. it. Yeah, yeah. So, so as soon as I've started the PTO, I've started the PTO. What's the PTO? So that takes the power from the engine and gearbox and basically runs the back end of the lorry. So I've switched it over. Um, and then as soon as you start the back end up, it greases itself. Ah, that's cool, isn't it? Very clever bit of kit. Yeah, so. That saves a lot of human error, because I'd imagine if you forget to do something, you could have a big big issue. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be fun. I've already, I do grease as well. There's all external nipples. Oh yeah. So I grease it up as about once a week, generally. For some reason, it always seems to fall on a Tuesday. I don't know why, <laughs> but yeah, so. Excellent, so James, we're gonna go for it in a minute then, mate. Yes, yeah, so I think we're ready, we've got the pipes set out. Uh, we're gonna try them. Uh, Excellent. We're gonna mix going and we're gonna, yeah, fill it up. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, we're going to go up the top now. We've got the first mix drop, um, and we're going to bump out the line. So, yeah. You all right, Dan? Hello, mate. Yeah, good, mate. Far away when you're ready. Coming down. Just keep an eye on it as it comes up. I can hear that water. You can, yeah. It's on its way. It's a little bit tense on lo longer pipe runs. It can be a little bit tense because. I it's, bet. Uh, <laughs> All of these jobs are tense, aren't they? That's right. There's nothing easy in your in your world because you've got such technical equipment. Yeah. There we go. Look at that, perfect. And we have three. There we go. Love it. Are you happy with that? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's um, that's pretty good. I've wet it up ever so slightly just to give it a little bit more. Um, a little bit more flow, but that yeah. is um, that is about where you want it, I'd say. It looks good. And it's not often you have a pl plastered room, is it? Or is it? Um, it doesn't really, there's no sort of rhyme or reason to that, to be honest. Some do, some don't. Um, some people like to, uh, to plaster afterwards. Yeah. Uh, some like to before, just so the screen doesn't get covered in plaster, yeah. say. Um, Mine was timing. Was it? Okay. Yeah. yeah, can be down to that as well, I guess, yeah. And I know how neat you guys are, so. <laughs> that's it. It flows so well though, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? It's, yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty good, I'd say. Now that is, um, is where you want it. And it doesn't give you too much pressure around the perimeter because I suppose it's only 50 mil thick. Yes. It's not like yep. pouring concrete at 200 mil thick. Exactly that, yeah, exactly that. It gives just the right amount, I'd say, to push back any expansion you've got there or any yeah. polythene. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot of outward push other than that. Um, whilst the material is very dense, it's about just over two tonnes per cubic metre, so it's still a... Is it? Still a dense product. Yeah, um, very. Right, I'm just going to go in here. Looking lovely. So. Well, it's filling up quick. Are they special screeding boots? These are, yeah, they're, uh, they're probably, yeah, one of the best that money could buy, I'd say. They, um, I've had these just over a year now, and if, if you think Really? That, yeah, if you think that they're in and out of screed. Yeah, two you, or you, three times you obviously today. clean them every time, though. Yeah, I wash them off, I wash them off, but, um, yeah. These are buck boots as well. Oh, are they? Oh, yeah, it's a good. 
Yeah, I was Good pretty running. impressed with them. I only bought them because that's the only ones that were in my size. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah, we, I've always used these to be honest. Yeah, they're the best. Rather than getting a cheap pair and then yeah, wear them yeah, out. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Buy once, buy well. That's right. Or yeah. Buy well, buy once. Yeah, that's the now, contrary to what everyone might be thinking, that, that you could just pour, anyone could just pour this in, it's gonna find its own level. It will to a point, but you still need to, you, you know, you, you, because it will slump, like there, you can see it's slumped to about an inch below that spider over there. So you, it's still a big skill involved in getting this right. Want some encouragement. Yeah, yeah, encouragement is the word. Yeah. yeah. Also, we make it look easy, don't we? Yeah, yeah I know, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are probably the, the um, London and the South East top crew now, so. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. That's why you come and help me, you see. That's it. Yeah, we are free to Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Fill that room. What's that doing, Dan? How many more? That is halfway through the last bit. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, it will be one more. Yes, yeah. James, a quick question for you, mate. Sure. What does one more mean? One more, so basically the truck mixes in batches of 0.3 of a cubic metre, um, so we can be, and we can make as little as 25% of a, of a third of a cube, so we can be quite accurate of how much uh, material we need so one more is just one more mix so another um, point another, another point three to be batched basically okay yeah. thank yeah. you you do get the hang of it working with it for a little while you get yeah. the hang of, it, of how much you need but the key is not to make too much of course <laughs> so the last one coming through dan yeah yeah okay mate i'll let you know once it's come through Sounds like an air raid siren. That. What does. is that? Is that a uh, they are the vibrators on the material bins. Uh, if you can imagine, they're V-shaped. Yeah. You have a vibrator on each side, and then vibrators just encourage the material to drop down. Amazing. And the emptier it gets, the more it echoes, basically. So, ah, yeah. amazing. That's why it sounds like the world's going to end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got enough in? All done. Yeah, we've got enough there. Um, we've pushed through as much as we can out of the pipe as well. So. Uh, makes for uh, minimal wastage as well. So Brilliant. Yeah. And now what? What's the next bit? Um, I'll just go around now, just double check that we've hit every level, um, then take the levels out. And I've got some long tubular bars over in that corner, which you might have seen. Yeah. Um, we just give it what's called a dapple. So we just go across the top with the bars, just give it a, a light agitation, just to encourage it to, to settle, find the corners, um, and gives it a nice finish as well. Yeah, yeah it's brilliant. Good effort, are you happy with that? That's good, yeah, it's about as good as you're gonna get. Yeah? Yeah, it's a good one. Do you still find, you know, an interest in doing a really nice job? Is it just comes yeah, so natural, you don't is. even think about it at all? Um, it is, it's more of, um, you know, getting it perfect, getting it spot on, and I think there's a lot of um, visual re reward from, um, you know, transforming a space so It quickly. is, and, you, and, and the speed that you do it in is just impressive because yeah, you've got yeah. this immense knowledge of, of what, where, why, and how, so. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, good. no, it's fabulous. I love watching it. I really do like watching it. For me, to stand and watch something like that is super therapeutic. A lot of people and, say that, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and you people. obviously don't need to go to the gym because that dappling. <laughs> I've walked a few miles backwards, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's all finished and it's looking brilliant. Just a clear up job now then, James. Yeah, just a cleaning up. Uh, takes longer than installing the screen itself. So 
Um, but yeah, just uh, clearing out the lines, pump a foam ball through the pipes, clear the pipes out, wash all the truck, and uh, yeah, that's it. What are you doing there? Uh, so we're just pumping the light, uh, pipes out now, just cleaning them through. Dan will just be cleaning the mixer up the other end, clean it all down through the pipe basically, and then at the very end we'll put a um, foam ball down the line just to clean everything out at the end. Brilliant. Yeah. You've worked hard. It's a long pipe run. <laughs> yeah. What did you catch? Little foam ball. I was talking about it. Just works its way all the way down the line. Just cleans it and out. And it scrubs it real clean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. I like the way you caught it. <laughs> all good then. Go down a bit. Uh, no, that's all right. That's yeah, that's fine. fine. Yeah. So that's it, James, you're, you're done. All done now, yeah, easy as that. I really appreciate you coming and also agreeing to be on the channel as well. I know that's it's fine. a bit daunting. Yeah. No, it's always good, always good to do work for yeah. Robin, so yeah, we enjoy it. All right, so on your closing piece, tell us the top tips for people thinking of having a screed, what they have to do. Um, with a liquid screed, I think you touched on it earlier. I think um, floor pre preparation is the most important part. Uh, really take some time getting that polythene in, getting your corners cut nice and tight, uh, taping at all your joints. Um, the, more effort, the more time you put into the prep, the better your screed's going to be ultimately. It saves us having to rectify it when we get on site as well, but you end up with a mu much nicer finish. Um, yeah, prep, preparation. And what way. about lead times? Uh, lead times as a company, we work on about seven to ten days. Um, where we're not reliant on a third party, we can be quite flexible um, in, terms of, in terms of lead times. Yeah. Um, obviously with the other truck we've got coming on the road as well. Yeah. Um, I would say keep an eye out for that with the new product that we've got on there. Um, it will allow for even more flexibility. So, yeah. and and where about how far do you go? Uh, we cover the whole of the south pretty much. Yeah, we we've been down to um, Eastbourne, um, all of East Sussex, all the way across to yeah. Southampton, New Forest, brilliant, um, into London, Reading, Essex. Yeah, big area, everywhere. <laughs> big area. All yeah. right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Robin. Yes, but as, as I said, been a pleasure. Ah, oh, thanks so much. <laughs> Another Cheers. great job as usual. Cheers, boys. Thanks so much. floor has been drying now for about a week. In fact, it's exactly a week since it went down. Now, indeed, it was ready to work and walk on after 24 hours. So I've been running a dehumidifier up here and coming up and emptying it out. So this little bit of water in there is probably from the last 24 hours. So even after a week, I'm still getting you know, a few gallons of water out of it. And I think that will still carry on. So it takes about two weeks to dry in ideal conditions, which is sort of ambient temperature of around 20 degrees, I believe. Obviously this is winter time I'm doing this. So it's a lot cooler, but the dehumidifier generates a little bit of heat. So the heat's been getting up to about 15 to 18 degrees in here with just the dehumidifier and that's helping. So what I'm gonna do next is fire up the underfloor heating. I'm only going to put a very low temperature through it and we're just going to get that to tick over and that will just push out any more moisture that's in here. But what I love about this liquid screed is the fact that it's so very flat, so very smooth. It's all continuous. It's very strong. It doesn't crack in doorways. Um, and also it's super quick. You know, you saw how quickly it was installed one guy actually installing it, another man actually dis you know, batching the gear. 
So yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful product and providing you factor it into the build at the right time, allow yourselves enough time for it to dry. You can't, really can't go wrong with it. And that is it. So that is the screed done. Thanks for watching. And if you don't subscribe already, I would appreciate it if you subscribed and followed and maybe consumed a little bit more of our stuff in the future.